In this clip, Sandy Matt speaks on the power of small objects and how they aid in the production of higher quality software. So, so think about this. Imagine your application is on a continuum. On one side, you can have a few really large objects, long step-by-step -step procedures that have all the code in them. At the other end of the continuum, there's an application made of many small interacting objects. On the, 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 the very big, the list of long procedures, they are really easy to understand. You can look at that code and tell exactly what's going on. However, if it's hard to change. It's easy to break something else if you make a change inside a long procedure. And it's very difficult to reuse part of it. You end up having to copy and paste, and then you have to worry about what state that stuff relied on. And so the, the downside, the upside is it's really easy to understand when you first look at it. The downside is that it's almost impossible to change. If your app never changes, that's a good bet. But most of our apps do. On the other side of the continuum, you have this notion of a big pool of small objects. And those small objects are clearly more difficult to initially understand. Looking at the source code of a bunch of small classes does not tell you everything. Much of the logic in that app exists in the messages, and the messages don't actually happen until you reconstitute it all and put it in memory. And so when you're looking at the source code for a bunch of small objects, you have to construct an imaginary mental model and supply the messages yourself in order to understand what's going on. Messages are at the core of object-oriented design. They, they create seams that give you levels of indirection, and they let you define objects that play roles and then use the roles as shields so that you can substitute new objects behind them. Messages are what gives you changeability. And so we have this tension between uh, an app that contains a bunch of procedures where you can look at the source code and be comforted because you can understand what it's doing, and another app that has a bunch of small objects where you can look at, you cannot immediately tell the operation of the whole by looking at the individual parts of source code on disk. Uh, Caleb, who's here somewhere, who works for ThoughtBot in uh, Boston, Mass, in the U.S., was part of a group of people. He, he uh, when I first discuss these rules in the spring, he took them into ThoughtBot, which is a consulting company, and they decided to adopt them on a project they were working on and use them exclusively as a test, as an experiment to see if they would help. But I specifically asked them about this issue, about the tension between the understanding a few large objects versus a bunch of small ones. And I was particularly worried about and interested in the experience of uh, junior programmers how they dealt with that pool of small objects. And so when I asked that question, they turned the camera around and pointed it at a young man named Paul. And I asked Paul, how, do you feel, how does it feel working on this application that's built of a bunch of small things? And what he said was that he loved it because it made him feel safe. That he knew that he did not have to understand the entire application to, to make a change. He just needed to understand his part and he had no fear, he had absolute confidence that he could, if he understood the part he was changing, he could make that change without breaking something in the larger whole. And that's the power of small objects. Like many things in software, this isn't an all or nothing decision. Developers often mistake preference for correctness, or even law, forgetting that there are good reasons for programming in either style, just as there are drawbacks. One helpful way to decide which approach to take is by looking at something called code churn, the frequency with which a part of the code base changes over time. And according to the book Your Code is a Crime Scene, a small portion of the code base, typically just 4 to 6%, consistently shows up as hotspots, the parts that change the most often and require the most attention. And that's a powerful insight. It means both styles, procedure heavy and object rich, can be valid not just across projects, but within the same code base. You may use small composable objects in the areas that change frequently, where flexibility and reusability matter most and you might lean on larger, more procedural structures in parts of the code that are stable and rarely change, where clarity and simplicity are more valuable than flexibility. So instead of choosing a style based on what feels more comfortable, we can adapt based on the actual needs of the system. It's not about purity, but trade-offs. Thoughts? Subscribe for more.